This is the first episode of 2024, and we're going to be talking about disciple making, spiritual mothers and fathers. You're going to meet two of my most important people in my life, Danny Norris, one of my spiritual fathers, and Helen Lambert, one of my spiritual mothers. Wow, we wouldn't even be here with Christians Engage if it wasn't for the foundation of discipleship and mothering and fathering that I've had. I'm so excited for you guys to meet some of the most important people in my life as we start celebrating the book that's coming out February 6th. Don't miss this episode. Welcome to the Conversations with Christians Engaged podcast. I'm your host, Bunny Pounds, the president of Christians Engaged. This ministry exists to awaken, motivate, educate, and empower ordinary believers in Jesus Christ to do three things. To pray for our elected officials and our nation regularly. To vote in every election to impact our culture and to engage in some form of civic education or involvement for the well-being of our nation. So thankful, Bunny, for what you do. A lot of people talk the talk, but you really walk the walk. There's nobody else I want to talk to about Jesus with than you. And I will stand and lock arms with this woman of God, Bunny Pounds, any day of the week. Uh, Bunny, you are a a new hero of mine. And I'm 100% behind something that Bunny Pounds is doing. Encourage her, pray for her, and be involved. Be part of Christians actively engaged. America is worth it. Now is the time. America needs your involvement. Please take our pledge to pray, vote, and engage. Join with a movement of other Christians that are doing these three simple things that can really impact this nation. Join us. It is the beginning of 2024. I cannot believe it's here, the year we've all been waiting for. I can tell you that this is the year we've been waiting for with Christians Engaged because everything we've been doing since the beginning of 2020 when we launched has really been about 2024. We knew we weren't going to be able to create a ministry that was going to have a major impact in 2022, but we knew by 2024, watch out world. This is our year. And I am so excited. My book's coming out, guys. Woo! Jesus and Politics. It's coming out. It's coming out February 6th. So if you have not pre-ordered it now, Jesus and Politics, One Woman's Walk with God in a Mudslinging Profession. This is not a textbook. This is stories of my crazy life. And pre-order it now. And so we're starting this year because I cannot tell you how vulnerable and process this was to write a book and then go through six edits of it to get Charisma to publish it. Thank you, Charisma and Frontline Books for publishing it. But it really hit me as I was doing my acknowledgements just how blessed I am, the heritage I've had from my father, um, just teaching me about the finished work of the cross and the unconditional love of God, but also the incredible foundation that myself and my husband, Tim, have had with people in our life that have really discipled us and been spiritual mothers and fathers. And so I want to call us this month to consider that God has created you for more than yourself. He's created you for a deep love for him, his word, to know him and to make him known. And that means being inconvenient sometimes. That means taking young people into your life. And I am about to talk to two of my favorite people on the planet that did that for Tim and I. And I have to say, we're only here because of that. So, Danny Norris. Yes, It is so good to see you. Thank you. So I got Danny Norris. He used to work at Bell Helicopter. He led our home group um, at a little church in Fort Worth that Tim and I met at. Can you believe that? Right. We met there at your house home group. Uh, It was hosted by Mark and Cherry McElheron. And then Danny led all the the Bible study and the prayer time. And then Helen Lambert's here. Hi, Bunny. It's so wonderful to be with you today. Ah, I'm so excited. (laughs) You and Mike have meant so much to our life. Um, And we'll get more into the story as well. But, you know, you took me on my first mission trip to Romania. You encouraged me to teach the word. Uh, You've taught me so much about love. And I am just so excited to have both of you guys here. Um, Danny... 
let's talk about this crazy young adult Bible study right. home group right. that we were a part of. I mean, here I was, an 18-year-old. I was at Christ for the Nations, and I wandered into this Colleyville Bible study and you're teaching everybody how to pray, how to wait for the second coming of the Jesus, um, how to live your life with intentionality. Um, tell us about some of that. Cause well, I think in getting started, I, I've got to say to you that for me, this is like coming full circle. Because <laughs> after reading your book, I feel like I'm the pupil and you're the teacher. You have done a beautiful job. And all of that was made possible because of the foundation that your dad laid for you at home, and then when you got to the Bible study that, that I was leading, you were already hungry for Jesus, and so you were ready for a, a new dimension of that, and you were ready to see what in the world the Lord was going to do with your young life, and then Tim came along, and you had the, the wonderful pleasure of using that as a home base for you two to grow in and learn about Jesus together. And that's yeah. as sweet as it can get. Yeah. So what was that like for you leading all those crazy young people? Cause you were in your forties at that time, right? Yes. And I, we had, uh, my wife and I had done a, uh, home group, uh, as lay pastors for about five years at our previous church. And so I was used to that, but what I wasn't used to and nobody can prepare for is what are going to be the the things that pop up each week in each of the people that you're that you're uh, teaching. It can't be just a teaching. It has yeah. to be discipleship. Yeah. And I've um, I've just want to encourage people that in every one of us, whatever your walk in life is, you are meeting people all day long that are believers that need to be discipled. And discipleship is not for a leader, you know, it's for all of us to disciple one another because you've got an experience yes. I don't have. You're discipling me right now in the things that you you are working on in your life, which have to do with America mm -hmm. and have to do with voting and have to do with the responsibility that that believers have in the church to make a difference in how this country is run. Well, that's an area of where God has led you that he hasn't led many of us. And so you are discipling us, whether it's through your book or through sitting here today. Well, that's what it was like. But for Tim, Tim and I had had many long phone calls and he was an, actually a pretty new believer. Yeah. And he was coming out of some stuff, but that doesn't matter. It's what you go into. Yeah. So it's, it's that coming out and going in that can happen really fast. And for Tim, it did. God's grace was on his life to, to, like a sponge, just drink up everything of the word of God and of the way of God. The nicest thing about Tim was his brokenness. Mm -hmm. He has a soft heart. He is ready for the next thing that God wants to do in his life. And anybody that is like that is almost on a discipleship path that God has set up and so it's not just one person speaking into their life. It's the whole body of Christ takes Tim, takes Bunny, loves them, points them, directs them. And your book is full of stories of people that you've met in your life that help to disciple you and then you in turn discipling others. What could you want at your age but to look back on now decades of that kind of a life? Amen. Awesome. And I, I remember meeting Tim at, you know, he was six months in the Lord and he was just right. like you said, like right. he's always been a sponge for the word of God, self-taught, um, just pursuing Jesus. And, and I, you know, I was attracted to all these young adults that were all hungry for God. And, you right. know, we simply just read the Bible and prayed and whatever God wanted to do. Right. Absolutely. That's how church should be. So Helen, I remember the very first time I met you, I heard you speak at a church we were attending and you and your husband, Mike, had just got back from Israel and you had been missionaries in Israel for like a long time, 14 years, something like that. And you spoke, I don't know if you took up an offering or you, I can't even remember what you did, but I thought, dude, I need to know that woman. Like there was just this spirit of God on you. And I'm like, I got to figure out how to get in her life. Mm -hmm. 
And I tell that story all the time to young people because I don't see a lot of that happening right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And I knew I wanted whatever you had on your life. So Mm -hmm. I asked you, could you teach me how to make Mediterranean food? Mm -hmm. And you invited me over (laughs) to your house. And I literally like forced myself into your life by cooking Mediterranean (laughs) food. And we became part of your family. And Mm -hmm. um, my husband works for your son right now. I mean, our kids work for your son. Like our whole families have just been intertwined over the last 20 years in such a deep way. So um, I guess, how how did you handle that? Some young person forcing themselves into your life? You know, it's really (laughs) amazing to me because, um, Bunny, because I don't see a lot of that. I don't see a lot of forcing the way their way in there is there is a work i believe that has to be done in the lives of people before they can be discipleshipped by the holy spirit mm. i really believe that the father has to come you know jesus said that nobody can come to the father except the spirit draw him yes and i i really believe that you were being led by and drawn by the Holy Spirit. But how did that make me feel? Well, I was really blessed because I, there was, here was a person in my life that wanted to do something I was passionate about. And, you know, a lot of times we connect uh, spiritual things with discipleship and some of the more mundane things that mm. we don't maybe necessarily deem Amen. as spiritual, yes. we sort of leave those things, you know, off to the side. So I, I have to admit that I was really touched and happy that you wanted to get in into um, my life. But I was also encouraged by that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I was very encouraged by the fact that you that I had something that you desired. And, you know, as women, we're taught to take care of and to love and to, and to provide for and to reach out. And we read, the, we read the Proverbs where it tells us that we are to see a field and buy it. We're to, our hands are to be working towards and with and towards those things. And, you know, I guess I just had never really felt like what I did was that important. But mm-hmm. I... I suddenly felt, oh, she wants to come over and she wants to learn to cook Mediterranean food. What you really wanted to do, well, you did want to learn to cook Mediterranean food, but you really wanted you really wanted to get nearer yeah. to my heart. Yeah. You saw something you saw something that you felt like you needed or wanted in your life. And that really, how did that make me feel? It made me feel pretty darn good. And listen, look what's happened now. <laughs> Well, I think it's awesome because, you know, we we know as leaders when somebody's pulling on, you know, for lack of a better word, the anointing on our Mm -hmm. life. Right. Mm -hmm. Or somebody needs something. They need answers Mm -hmm. for a problem that they're having. Well, that Mm -hmm. forces us to go search out. You know, we might not have the answer, but we become better leaders because of those people that are pulling on what's inside of us. Yes. I, I suddenly felt like, you know, I suddenly felt like. There's something that you were after in me, and I, you know, I wanted to be there for you. Yeah. I wanted to mm-hmm. open my heart yeah. to you, and I wanted to be near you, and I wanted to give whatever it was that you were trying, that you were pulling on in my life. And that's it. I'll tell you something. There's no greater, there's really no greater um, feeling as far as feelings go. There's no greater, um, what can I say? Help me out, Danny. I... I, I I just there's there's just something about that yeah that causes a person who is in leadership to want to live the best life that Jesus has for them in front of Amen. another person. Well, and I'll just ask you a follow up question on that. So, you know, fast forward another four or five years of us walking together. You know, we went out of a church situation, started a little gathering in our home that you you and Mike were a part of, and, and y'all were the ones that eventually pushed us into ordination and actually starting a real church, you know. Mm. But um, we went to Romania, and I'll never forget, me and you both had a burden for Romania, and so we asked the husbands, hey, can we go to Romania? We end up going to Romania, and here we are with the director of the Bible school at the Christ for the Nations in Romania, and you're like telling Cornell, I'll never forget it, just— 
you need to see this woman, Bunny Pounce. She's says just a great <laughs> teacher and such a shepherd. And you were just exhorting him to see me the way that you saw me. Mm. And I'll never forget just not only a huge open door for me to really teach the Bible for the first time in a larger audience than just our house churches, but you saw me after the spirit and you wanted to do everything you could to push me out there. Um, tell me about that. You know, I, I guess from the very first time that we were near each other, I, I heard you worship. I heard you worship at the church where we went. I saw, I saw your heart. I saw a person who loved God first with their whole heart and trusted him and wanted to make him known who knew him and wanted to yeah. make him known. And I wanted to be a part of that. And I wanted other people to be able to see what was on the inside of bunny pounds. I, I felt like, you know, I felt like, uh, I felt like I saw it. I felt like I saw a person with great compassion. I remember one time we were sitting in a church beside each other and the minister asked us to, um, he asked us to look at each other and tell each other what we saw. You remember that? And we happened to be seated next to each other. And I remember when I looked into your eyes, I saw a person of great compassion, Mm. great compassion. And I saw this world of compassion inside your eyes and coming from your heart. And you know, that is something that the world has far too little of today is compassion. I saw that and I saw it. And then when we fast forwarding to when we were in Bible school in, in Romania, said those things to Cornell. I remember going to sleep and being a few years older than you are. You never did go to sleep. I, I remember you going out, <laughs> sitting on the steps till late in the wee hours of the morning discipling and talking to young people. And I, I say, yeah, to, I was lying in there in the bed, you know, praying for you, you know, believing God to touch whoever it was you were ministering to out there because I, because you had a passion for that. You had, pa- you had compassion, but you also had passion. Mm-hmm. You had passion. You would talk to anybody there that, that would open their heart and sit down with you. And, you know, it was a great, it was a great honor for me, you know, to, introduce you to someone that my husband and I had an, we had an uh, opening there. We had a, um, we had established uh, relationship, a relationship yeah. there with, with the Bible school leader. And, you know, it was, it was just a great opportunity for us to introduce him to someone that we had no idea where you'd be today, Bunny. Did you have an idea where you'd be today? I don't think so. I don't think any of us knew where God was going to take you and, you know, maybe maybe I'm getting all, you know, getting ahead of myself, but I really I really feel like, you know, we we as spiritual fathers and mothers, and I believe you'll bear this out, Danny, we have no idea who we're standing beside, do we? No. When we're discipling someone. That's correct. We have no idea where where God brought them from or where he's going to take them to. Yes. You know, and so it's so important and and one of the highest callings there is. Mm. I've always said being a mother and a father, both in the natural and the spiritual, are are the highest callings there are. There are so many people that walk in great places on the earth, but it requires us to do everything that Jesus did is to lay down our life for someone else. Yes. And um I I really I really feel so touched to be a part of that in your life. Thank you for allowing us to. Thank you, Helen. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we stay focused in this ministry around prayer, voting and engagement, but we can't be the leaders uh, for America if we're not discipled. And if we aren't uh, really, the gospel is the only thing that saves people, but the word of God is the only thing that transforms us. So Danny, we're going back to the home group because um, what I appreciated so much about, you and Cynthia and our life at this juncture in our life was just the simplicity of learning prayer, worship, the word. I mean, the, I call it the three toolkits of really walking with Jesus, right? Right. But we can flow in and out of that. You taught us that, how to meditate on the word, how to worship spontaneously, how to pray 
I remember you bringing Tim and I over to your house one time, and you're like, okay, everyone kneel down. <laughs> right. It was a lot more loving than that. Um, but we're kneeling down and we're praying right now. Um, and just that discipline, um, why is that important for us to teach young people? Just the basics. Well, when you open yourself up and make yourself available to a young person, you're not sure at that point if they have really had an experience with Jesus. So you get to come in legitimately because you're there to help them. The first part of disciple is to find out where that person's relationship with the Lord is. Mm. Once you know that they've truly been born again, they've given their heart to Jesus, they're trusting in him and him alone. Yes. And they are truly have the spirit of God living within them. Now you got the delightful commission to stir that up within them, help them discover their gifts and help them put all of their trust in Jesus for every single day of their life. And the next step after that is once they're doing that for themselves to show them how to do it for somebody else. Yes. And so the chain of discipleship started the day that God said, let us make man in our image because he wanted relationship. Mm. Discipleship is another way to say relationship. Mm. You are not only bringing someone into relationship with you, it immediately becomes a triune relationship where you and the discipler and Jesus are getting together and you're deciding the next step in your life. Uh, I wanna read a, a little small quote that my pastor said recently. He said, he's never got over being saved. Oh, wow. That is a powerful, powerful statement. Yeah. Yes. That, that, that right there is God's signature on someone that he has touched. They never get over the touch. Mm -hmm. And our job as disciples is to let them realize the incredible thing that God yes. has done for them. Yes. And now with that, with that gift understood and realized, let's go forth and make disciples ourselves. and you're building relationships. It's yeah. always about relationship. Yeah. And see, the reason I'm saying that is because discipleship can have the connotation of, oh, we're gonna memorize scripture, we're gonna teach principles, mm -hmm. this and this and this, we're gonna learn about this. Those will come, mm. but first of all is teaching, helping point somebody to be a lover yes. of Jesus, yes. a lover of Jesus. Yes. It's not theological, it's, it's birth. You are birthed into his love and you take that on as your signature for life. I was touched and I've never been the same. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm getting so much joy out of this because when you guys read my book and you see all these crazy conversations I've had with politicians and elected officials and just what God's done, um, just to know that this is my DNA, right? <laughs> um, it's just this Jesus loving um, world where we just really understand how much we've been saved from and how much we have to give because we we have him, Right. Um, Danny, I will never forget you and Cynthia, like just were so good about, um, just make everything was practical. Yes. Everything was spiritual, but everything's practical. The, you know, teaching us about marriage, teaching us. I remember one day you sat me down and showed me how you were saving money for your daughter, Laura Lee's wedding in the future and how you're putting money together. And you had this, I mean, this is before computer, you know, Excel and spreadsheets, but you had like it all written out. You showed me like how you had this secret envelope that you saved cash in to be able to give people spontaneous right. gifts, right? I'm not, mm. I mean, just beautiful things like that, that just really showed me as a young person how intentional you were about the values that you held. And, you know, I'm not only going to let Jesus be the Lord of, you know, my quiet time or church attendance, but Jesus is Lord over my time with my wife, Cynthia, Jesus is Lord over right. my finances, my kids, all of that. Um, why, why was that important for you? And I'm so thankful that you did open up your life to me like that because it, it, it marked me. Um, 
Why why did you think that was important for us well, for Tim and I? Let me let me use uh, as an example something you reminded me that I had done with you because it's the kind of thing that as you're working on the heart, you're working on the infrastructure that supports all of that. And it has to make sense. It has to be it has to be orderly. I mean, you've got to have a home base that provides order for your life. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something that you mentioned, which was um, the discipling of someone in the, a young person, especially in the area of, of personal financial responsibility. And uh, that sounds like a big word, but it's not. But we got to understand that discipling others in the management of their personal finances is absolutely founded on Scripture. Yes. Absolutely. And here's the key. It's Jesus said it's a matter of the heart. Finances are a matter of the heart. He says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Mm. So you are entrusted every day, every week, every month mm. with God's blessings on your life. Call it salary, call it whatever you want to call it. But God is our provider. Yes. He provides for us. Yes. He says where that treasure ends up. Your heart has a part to do with that. Where your money is, where your treasure is, there's your heart also. True. So if your heart's in the kingdom, then you're, you're a long way down the road to what? Spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity. And then you can have all the freeness that you need yes. to love Jesus un unashamedly and, un and just abandon yourself to him because you've got things squared away at home. You're not out of balance. You're not cheating over here and, and telling Jesus you love him. Yes. You're, you're running a consistent life. Yes. Now, I, I, I wanted to say that when you're helping a person to develop this, let's talk about discipleship just for a second. You want them to develop a thankful heart, a heart that says everything is coming from the Father of lights. Yes. It's coming down upon me every day. Yes. Secondly, you're, you want a person to have an obedient heart. Mm. He's obedient to what? God says, I'm going to give you this, but you're going to bring my portion back to me, and it's called the tenth, and I want it as soon as you get it. I want you to give it back to me because that part's mine. Yeah. When you are obedient to that, whoa, you just opened the whole world uh, of, of financial circle between God and you as a believer. Yes, yes. Thirdly, he wants you to have a governed heart. It's a matter of the heart. He wants you to govern your heart yes. by not buying what you can't afford, by getting on a cash system as soon as you can. And you say, that guy's nuts. <laughs> but I'm, no, you're I not. promise you, <laughs> when you put the reins on your flesh and you, and you pull it back and say, we're going to buy what God says we should buy and what God has allowed us to buy mm -hmm. and what God has funded us to buy. Yes. Next is a trusting heart that says, you know what? God is my only provision. It's God or it's nothing. I mean, you may work for a guy. You may have a fine job. I was laid off after 27 years of one of the finest aircraft companies in the nation. Hmm. So were they my provider? No, God was my provider. And I've been retired 11 years now and we hadn't missed a meal. <laughs> Uh, God wants us to also have a giving heart. Yes. God gives you provision. You give back to him. Then you take care of your, your financial needs at home. You're supposed to. You're supposed to bless your children. You're supposed to keep your house up. You're supposed to buy and maintain your cars. You're supposed to do all that. But there's always got to be the heart that's always looking out for the next person to give to. Yes. Uh, My, yeah. So that's an idea of a practical side of discipleship that comes after you get the main gem in place, which is building the love for Jesus. And that comes only in a person that's had the touch. Yes. When the touch comes and the mm -hmm. spirit of God dwells in them, <laughs> they can't help but worship him and praise him. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
Amen. Amen. So everybody that's ever worked for me or been a part of my life now knows where I got it from. So (laughs) it's just, I mean, this is the reality is that the Holy Spirit should touch every part of our life. Right. And, and, you know, our goal with mothering and fathering the next generation or creating disciples is ultimately to push them to the ultimate goal of life, which is to be Christ-like and to make Jesus Lord of their life completely. Right. So, Helen, one thing I've learned from you is nobody gives hel- hugs like Helen Lambert. Nobody <laughs> is more empathetic. No one's more compassionate. Um, you know, I say this about Kyle and, and Laura Martin at Time to Revive as well, but just the people in my life that have taught me how to be present with a person that mm-hmm. you, you've always been present mm-hmm. with everybody you're with and, yeah. and whoever you're with is the most important person in that moment. Right. That's <laughs> right. such an incredible thing. Um, you know, how, how do we affect others by living out our faith in front of them and loving other people and demonstrating that to them? Well, it, I can tell you for sure that it happened to me. I had a lady who, uh, Bunny, you've known me for many, many years, and you know that I came from a very bad, difficult background and situation, and uh, I was kind of the person who lived on the other side of the track, so to speak, and um, I will tell you now that um, a lady by the name of Brenda Haas, her her husband was the band director at the local high school, and um, I never dreamed that a person of that kind would ever want anything at all to do with with me, but she saw me at church kind of like you saw me at church, and she heard me, um, and she talked to me, and well, let's make a long story short. I had a nursing home, and she would, um, she she came, and she knocked on the door of my nursing home, and in her hand, she carried a mop bucket, mm-hmm. and a mop, and a broom, and a dustpan, and a bunch of cleaning rags, and she, I mean, I looked at her like, she was crazy. I thought, <laughs> what is she doing here? You know, but I was remodeling and she had come to lend herself to me in whatever way she could. Mm. What she was really after was my heart. Mm. Yes. She was really after me. She was really after what she saw in me. And by the way, she saw speaking. She saw speaking. Uh, she saw public speaking and ministering to people and preaching she saw all that, and she, yeah, that's what she was really after. But she came, and when she came, she had this great big hug for me mm-hmm. that just melted me all the way down to my toes. You know, it's really hard not to love people when, they love, when they're trying to love on you. Mm-hmm. I, went into, I went into American uh, Legion the other night with a 91-year-old woman, and I listened to a young uh, Marine who's retired I listened to him spew out pure hatred for just about every system that this country stands for. Every, I mean, from the government all the way down. And he had a legitimate, he had a pretty legitimate reason. You know, I talk with my hands. He had a pretty legitimate reason. And I listened to all this and he just spewed and spewed and spewed and spewed. And when I got ready to leave, I told him, I said, Zach, I want to tell you something. My son went to the same place where you went. He served in the same. He might have even been in there the same time you were in there. And I said, uh, I know you've been through a lot. I know you've been through some terrible situations. But I want to tell you something. I want you to stand up off your bar stool. And I want you to put both of your hands down to your sides. And I'm going to come and stand in front of you. And I want you to put your arms up on my shoulders. Because I'm about to hug you like a mother hugs her son. (laughs) And I said, I know you have a lot of beefs and a lot of arguments, and they're legitimate. I I, I do not argue with you about those things. But I think you need a hug, and I'm going to give you one. So he put his arms up there on on my shoulders, and I could just feel him begin to break. You know, it's a beautiful thing when we can love people beyond where they are and that's isn't that after all what jesus did for all of us yes he loved he loved me beyond where i was i was a new believer i had just come to the lord uh in a in a billy graham crusade on on the tv i had listened to this voice telling me over and over that god loved me 
and that he would forgive all of my sins, no matter how terrible all I had to do was repent of my sins and turn away from my sin, and he would save me. Yes. And here behind him comes Brenda Haas, this lady with the mop oh bucket. Oh, my. And, the, and here she is ready to step right in there and right in there and, and just begin to nurture me. She began to, she began to nurture me. We teach by example. That's how we teach others. It's, it's very difficult for anyone to believe we're real when all we can do is spout off the Word of God or what a person needs to do with their life. But I guarantee you something changes when you have a mop bucket in your hand yep. or when you have a broom in your hand and you begin to take up whatever it is that person needs and walk beside them in it. Yes. And she was there day after day after day after day. She brought food. <laughs> She brought food. Yes. She shared my food. I have a very strong foundation in her, in what she imparted to my life. Um, she didn't believe everything exactly the way I do today. But you know what? She 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 knew how to get into my heart. Yes. And she did that through the way she served me. So I really believe um, I, I've prayed for a lot of people who are uh, very difficult very hard. And I've always looked back and said, Father, there was no one more difficult than I was. <laughs> there was no more, there was no one more resistant to your pull than I was. There was no one, there's no one that could be harder hearted while underneath crying out, yes. screaming out yes. for release. There was no one in that condition. So if you could touch me, if you could do what you've done, for this person, I know you can do something for Mr. Mrs. Yep. Whomever, because there's something about when it's happened to you, when it's really happened to you and you've seen it and you've experienced it. It's not hard for you to believe that God can do that for somebody else. And so through the through the years that she was several years that she discipled my life. And I'll tell you something. She took me to home meetings. She took me all over sa Southern Indiana. We went to ended Kentucky. We went to home meetings all over the place. I preached. I didn't know the first thing about preaching. I preached and taught. I'd get a scripture. I'd pray. God Man. would minister to me. I'd get up there and start, start expanding on the scripture. So I, I, I and another thing, she never, and this is something, Bunny, that you and I have together today. I never heard the lady backbite or demean other people. Mm -hmm. I've never heard you do that, Bunny. Mm -hmm. I've never heard you backbite. Never heard you demean other ministries or cut down other people. And surely you've seen a lot of things that you could have spoken into in a negative way. But I learned from her that to hold confidences, you know, in people's lives, to not just shout out everything you know about somebody or talk about it to your friends as though that person's situation. I mean, those those are entrustments that God gives us yes. in people's lives, and we're called to really hold those in trust. And I'm, you know, I'm so thankful for what she did in my life, what she was to me. I'll always be grateful to 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 her for. Well, and, and the point of this is to say, um, gosh, we just have no idea the effect that one person can have on a life and what that's done. You know, you and Mike served in Israel as missionaries for 14 years. You've been to, Rom to Romania, Vietnam, Cambodia. I can list all the countries. I mean, thousands, you guys have been almost everywhere um, and, and poured into people in churches all over this country for years and that one response by that one woman sent your life into right. where it is today. And therefore, my life has been touched, but not just mine, hundreds of people, yeah. right? Because of the love of Jesus. That you know, Bunny, I'll interrupt lives. you just a second real quick, just to add to that. I was getting ready to go out the door to come down here today. And my husband said, my, my goodness, Helen, stop before you go out. You need to hear this. And he began to read off about where I preached in a church years and years ago mm. in Baltimore and how a young man was healed. 
and set free. I mean, and here this guy had waited all these years, and somebody told him that he ought to get in contact and tell us. That happened just before I oh, walked out great. the door wow. to come here. Thank you, I Lord. mean, we don't, we simply do not know where a hug or a handshake or a dollar bill or a word of, of, of encouragement, we have no idea where those things can go. Yeah. 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 And um, so, yeah, as I'm celebrating this month, uh, the book's coming out February 6th. I know I keep holding it up, but Yay. it's coming out February 6th. It's Yay. Good. It's good. Um, and But I wanted you guys to know, for me, writing an acknowledgement section of this book was important to me, but these are just not names on a page for me. These are people that have walked in my life that have helped Tim and I be the parents and now grandparents. I hope that we are honoring Jesus in everything that we do. But um, it really, if, if we're going to see change in people's hearts, it's going to be one disciple at a time. It's not, you know, gosh, I, I talk about this all the time, but it's not it's not just the big programs at the churches. It's not just the church services. It's not just coming to a church service for 20 minutes and hearing a great message and going home. It's about what are we investing in people's lives. So as we close, Danny, one last exhortation for everybody um, to go make disciples. Well, I think it starts for me at four in the morning. And I know that's I'm going to make a point here, but what That's I mean earlier by, than me. What I'm I mean 530. By, what, I'm, <laughs> what I mean by that is you have to have the time away with just the Father and just the Son and just the Holy Spirit. You have got to have that sitting before the God of all creation and understanding how much he loves you. Mm-hmm. And when you abide in that presence and in his love, you will understand that he wants to love others through you and it'll, you'll be motivated. That is so awesome. it's always comes back to Jesus. Yeah. How are you in Jesus today? And Bunny's book is great about showing in her life, the ups and downs of that. And that's what we want. That's what we all want to hear is that yeah. we've never strayed too far, done something so bad, said something so wrong that God can't bring us back to his presence in a matter of minutes, seconds. Yeah. It's just, he's waiting, waiting. Well, this is my favorite podcast I've ever done mm. uh, of like hundreds of podcasts. Why? Because these people mean more to me than anybody else. But I just want to say that this is how we go to the darkest place on the planet. This is how um, we we hug people that are not like us and we pray for them and we unconditionally love them is that we become disciples. We become ones that are trying desperately to take in the grace of God to empower us to live the Christian walk and to love others um, with that abandonment. So I just want to encourage you just know that any book, any stories you read from this book, Jesus and Politics is Really, on I'm on the shoulders of many, many people that have invested in our family's lives, and we want to be those ones that help you and encourage you to walk this out um, daily. Um, so I'm going to close and just pray over us all today, and um, thank you all for joining us this first episode of 2024. Just know we're here for you to help you, not just pray, vote, and engage, but how do we walk with Jesus in a culture right now that frankly, it's difficult. It's difficult. And we're all going to have to um, press into God this year like never before. So as we close out this episode, I want to remind you, dive into the word of God, dive into prayer and worship, and know that when you're diving into those things, you're ultimately diving into a person. His name is Jesus that loves you and loves your family and wants to see you be the leader that he's called you to be. Lord, I just thank you for today. God, I thank you for this year as we start 2024. God, that you're after our heart. You're after our souls. And Lord, you desire for us to love you with all of our heart, soul, and mind and strength and to love our neighbors as ourselves. These are the great commandments. And Lord, we just start this year dedicating our lives to you, dedicating our hearts to you, our families to you, our homes to you. 
God, that we would truly be able to disciple people one heart at a time. It's really not about the crowds. It's not about the speaking engagements. It's not about the influence that we could potentially have in politics or government or ministry or business or whatever we're, we're putting our hands to, God. Ultimately, we believe that it's about hearts. It's yes. about people yes. Man. that you're after and the yes. kingdom of God being expanded one heart at a time. Yes. And God, I pray um, even as people grab Jesus in politics and they read it starting in February, Lord, that you would capture our heart that we can make a difference in this nation by yes. walking with you. Yes. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for this new year. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you, Helen. Thank you, Danny. We love you. Thank love you, you so much. We'll see you guys next week as we uh, talk about more discipleship and being the mothers and fathers of the faith that God's called us to be. We'll see you next week. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this incredible podcast. What in the time we've had. We love you so much. We love being in your life. Have you subscribed? Have you shared this with your family and friends? Please subscribe on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Rumble, wherever you get your audio or video pods. We need your help. This mission is undergirded by individuals just like you that support this ministry monthly annually, and whenever you think about us, to be able to reach over a million Christians in the next two years. That's our goal. We want to empower a million Christians around America to pray, vote, and engage regularly. Will you help us? We're here to do that, and we need your help. I want to say thank you to our partners at The Stream. What an incredible online publication put out by James Robinson and Life Outreach International as we come together across denominational lines as believers to discern what God's saying about the news of the day and to hear from different viewpoints. Check out the stream, make it your homepage, and get on their email list. This product is amazing. Also, our partners at Edify app, put out by Christian Post. This podcast app is a convergence of Bible teachers around America. We're excited to be a part of Edify app check out all their other podcasts. Thank you so much again for caring about this nation. We're here to help you pray, vote, and engage. We'll see you next week.